Hey everybody, Hoosier Carnivore here coming at you with another video on how I care for, clean, use, and maintain the cast iron pans in my collection. We got a fun video coming up next. Stay tuned. Welcome everyone to my cast iron collection. As you can see here, I've got eight Griswold pans. These are all Griswold made from 1930 to 1939. I'll pull one of them out here for you to take a look at. This is the number six, and these are smooth bottom, large logo, and I think these pans are just awesome. Uh, they're beautiful. They're, I don't know, almost like a piece of artwork to me. And I've procured and restored all of these pans myself. Um, most of them were in pretty nice condition already when I got them. So they cleaned up and, you know, I mean, take a look at that at my number seven right there in the cooking surface. Um, really, really nice and really, really enjoy cooking in these pans. I've got sizes number three, four, number five, number six, number seven, trusty number eight, which I use a lot, number nine, and number ten. And I'll let you guys know that the numbers on these skillets, they don't necessarily designate how wide the skillet is. This number, it represents the size of the hole on the old-fashioned stoves that were wood burning or coal burning um, at the time that these skillets were made. So, as you can see, I'll grab my tape measure. My number 10 is about 12 inches wide. So, don't be fooled when you see the numbers if you ever go and shop for or purchase uh, these old antique skillets, the numbers do not designate the width of the skillet. So when I restored these pans, I used a lye bath and electrolysis system to take all the gunk off and then used the electrolysis to take all the rust off. And it worked wonderfully and, restu and restored... Blah, blah, and it restored these pans to basically like new condition, just like they were in the 1930s when they came out. If you want to check out more videos on how to restore cast iron, just go on YouTube, search around for rest how to restore cast iron, and you'll find tons of information on how to restore cast iron. But if you're just getting into cast iron, I would recommend buying a pan that's already restored and then learn how to use it. And then if you want to end up uh, learning how to restore one, go ahead. Or if you just want to dive in with both feet and restore one, go for it. Uh, JT uh, from Poco Moonshine Family, he just bought a number eight Griswold, restored it himself. And it looks fantastic. And it's his very first pan ever. Um, go check out his channel. He's got a great channel. Uh, and he actually requested that uh, I make this video. I guess the first thing to decide on getting started with cooking is what size pan am I going to need? Uh, what size pan is best for me? And what do I intend to do with it? So... Most people end up buying the number eight. The number eight is a great size pan. It's about the size of a standard skillet. It's about 10 inches wide. Um, most skillets you find in the stores are about this size. Um, and actually these skillets in the number eight size are the easiest to find and they made the most of them. Um, so when you want to find one, you can usually find one for a pretty fair price. Now, if you want a number 10 or a number 9 or even bigger, um, they make 11s, 12s, 14s. Um, 
and some of the other styles, uh, and those can get very expensive. So I would recommend, if you're just getting started with cast iron, buy a number eight pan. It's good for almost anything. You can put a steak in here, fry hamburger, bacon, eggs. You can easily fry six eggs in this skillet, no problem at all. All right, so now that we've got our skillet picked out, uh, let's see, what am I going to make in this skillet today to, to test it out? Well, maybe we can just, we can make some eggs, but I think you guys have seen me use the number eight before. So maybe we'll go with something like the number six. Number six will be good. All right, so first thing you want to do when you get your skillet out is you want to preheat it. I usually like to put mine up on about four, and we'll start warming this skillet up. The best thing you can do to maintain and use your cast iron is to heat it slowly and cool it slowly. Um, these pans, even though they are made out of cast iron, they can be fragile, they will crack, and... They don't like to be heated up quickly, and they don't like to be cooled off quickly. All right, so on the number six, just in case you were curious, the number six pan is approximately nine inches wide. There you go, about nine inches wide on the number six. And if you saw this on my stove before, I'll show you what it is, or I'll just show it to you. And then you can tell me what you think it is. This is also a Griswold piece. Double zero size. Erie PA. This is a ringed one. But do you know what it is? I use it as a spoon rest for my, uh, for my oven. But, you know, what are these things for? And what is this thing for? That's uh, it's really weird looking. Uh, note in the comments if you know what this is for. Did I say I was going to cook eggs up for you guys? No, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to cook up some bacon pieces. Because eggs are too easy. Um, the pan will come out pretty clean. And I want to get the pan kind of dirty so I can show you guys... How to clean it up and this bacon right here it tends to stick a little bit and leave a little bit of residue in the bottom of the pan which you'll see later and it'll be a good example of how to easily clean up now what I got here is some bacon grease and the first thing you want to do you start warming your pan up is you want to get some oil in there you don't want to fry up anything in your cast iron skillet with it being just dry. So we're going to move that around in there, get that good and happy. Our skillet's starting to warm up. We'll be back in a minute. All right, while we're waiting for our skillet to warm up, I wanted to talk to you for a second about choosing skillet pan holders. Because this skillet will get hot. It's not hot yet. I can really hold the handle no problem. But as I feel around out here, it's starting to get pretty warm to the touch. Well, eventually this handle is going to get hot and you're not going to want to touch it. So they make different ones. You can get these like rubber silicone ones and they work okay. But I don't, I don't really particularly care for them because it just feels like the pan's just going to kind of move around in there. And these are made by Lodge, and I think, you know, if you've got a modern Lodge pan, they probably work okay. But for these older skillets, I like, this is also made by Lodge, I like these kind of quilted cotton uh, pan holders, and they do an excellent job. I feel like I got a really good grip on the pan. It's not going to get away from me, and it doesn't get hot. So if you're wondering what kind of, um, handle holders you should get, I would recommend getting a cloth type. Or if you know somebody who's handy with a sewing machine, 
uh, have them make you one. I think it would be pretty easy to make. All right, I think our skillet's warm enough. We can start cooking. Having to hold this with one hand and then put the bacon in the other, so forgive me. All right, here we go. Skillet's nice and warm. Starting to sizzle nicely. Oh man, there's nothing quite like cooking up bacon in an old cast iron skillet. This is going to be a power bowl for me for my one meal a day. Doing a little one meal a day challenge for the month of November. Got to change it up. Keep it fun. Keep it interesting. All right, and this is going to cook and render down. I like to use bamboo. Uh, you could use wood, um, spatulas. You can use plastic spatulas if you like, or you could also use metal. I would just recommend if you're starting out, go with something that's going to be easy on your seasoning and isn't going to scratch the surface of your pan. Metal can do that if you really dig at it, but you don't want to. You don't want to do that. So if you do decide to use uh, a metal spatula, just you know, be really easy and gentle with it, and don't gouge your seasoning. If you take care of these skillets, they will last you a lifetime. They will last your kids a lifetime, and their kids a lifetime, and their kids a lifetime. Mm. All right, so our bacon's moving along here. If it starts to stick on you, don't worry. It doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. As you can see here, it doesn't really look like it in the camera, but there is a little bit of a film developing on the bottom of the pan where the bacon is sticking a little bit. But as you can see, it's not sticking, sticking, but it is leaving a little bit of a, a film on the bottom of the pan. And that's fine. That will come off nice and easy uh, when we get ready to uh, clean the skillet out. I like to cook my bacon up for power bowls to where it's just a little chewy. I don't like it crispy, crispy. This has got a little ways to go, and then we'll be ready. So have you figured out what this thing is yet? <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It's not for cooking. All right, we'll be back. All right, this bacon's almost done. I turned the heat up to 50%. It's on 5. And just a pro tip, if... Your, still, your skillet starts getting a little hot, and I did turn it up to try to make it a little hot. As you can see here, that's not steam coming off of here. That's smoke. So you want to move it back. You can just move it back onto a cool burner and let your skillet calm down a little bit. Let your skillet calm down. That's about how I like my bacon done. So we're going to go ahead and turn our burner down. I turn it down to about three. Sorry for the camera juggling. And we'll pull this we'll pull this off of here. Alright, bacon's done as you can see. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off our bacon. I'm gonna get a little bit of this oil off of here. These old skillets are nice because they got these little pour spouts on the side. And I'm going to save that bacon grease for later. Carnivores do not waste bacon grease. I'll pull off my bacon. And before I clean this pan, I'm just going to try to scrape it out and get as much of this oil and stuff out of here as I can. And now you can see that's a dirty pan. You can hear it. There's like a grit on the bottom of that pan from the bacon. But that's okay. You, you can even see it on the 
on the spatula a little bit. So we're going to get all that out of there like that. I'm going to take a little bit of a paper towel. I'm just going to wipe it up because the less grease down your drain, the better. All right? To the sink. All right, here we are at the sink. I hope you can hear me. I had the water running. Pro tip, you want to make sure your water is all the way hot. And here we've got our hot pan fresh off the, off the oven. We're just going to put a little bit of water in the bottom. As you can see, hopefully, got some bubbles and some steam going. You don't want the thing to just bubble up and boil out of control. That means your pan's way too hot. But you just want it to just kind of bubble up a little bit when that water hits it. And I like to use a little scrub brush and just move it around like that. A little more water in there, dump it out. And as you can see, that pan is clean. It's just that little bit of scrubbing it's ready to go again. Now if it didn't get quite all the way clean, you can use one of these scrapers and scrape your material out. If you get a real good stuck on piece, that's okay. Well they also make this chain mail. You just put a little bit of water in the pan like that. Put your chain mail in there. Move it around. Key tip, if you don't want to get burnt, don't touch the pan. Keep your hand on here. And just move that around and that'll break your stuff loose. Rinse out your pan. And that's it. It's ready to go. Now we're going to go back to the oven. Alright, here we are back at the oven. Put the pan back on the fire. It's still, the, the burner's still on. And what I'm going to do just going to let this pan just kind of warm up a little bit because getting in that water, it did cool it off. So we're going to let the temperature come back up. It doesn't have to get all the way hot again, but you do want it to be warm. I'm going to take a little bit of our, our little friendly bacon grease that we had here that we, that we just saved. I'm going to dab my paper towel in it. I'm just going to give it a little rub around just to get a nice little coating on the pan. Look how great that looks. Just going to rub it around, get a nice little coating. We'll fold our, our paper towel over to a dry side. I'm just going to kind of remove excess oil. Looking a little better. And if you want, you can rub the back side of your pan a little bit too and get the sides. Just going to care for the whole, the whole thing. I'm going to give it one more fold around, wipe it out again, and get it to where it's like a, where you can see it, it's almost like a, like a semi-gloss look, and it's done. It's ready to cook again the next time, maybe give you a little, pull your thing off there and give you a little handle of wipe, make sure there's no excess oil on your pan. And it's ready to go for the next cook, for the next, I don't know, for the next hundred years. If you care for your pans this way, um, then you won't have any trouble with them. They'll perform as designed. Uh, and I hope you end up loving them just as much as I do. They're a fantastic tool to have on the carnivore diet, on keto. Even if you're vegan and you want some to fry your pan, fry your veggies up in, um, they're they're absolutely fantastic, and uh, I love using I love using them every time I come to the stove. You know, a little part of me gets excited about using my antique skillets. So, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Um, the last thing, just turn your burner off. You can leave it sit here on the hot burner for a little while if you want, or you can move it off and just let it cool on its own. Either way, the pan will be happy. What you don't want to do is run it under cold water and try to cool it off. So just 
you know, you warm it up slow and you cool it off slow. And uh, it'll be here to cook for you and your family for hundreds of more years to come. Please like, subscribe. If you have questions, please post those in the comments. Thanks a lot. Oh, one, one last thing for you guys. Um, for anyone out there who may think that this pan isn't truly clean because it wasn't washed with soap or run through a dishwasher or anything like that, um, rest assured, this pan is hot enough. I mean, I can feel the heat coming off of it right now. Um, there are no germs, uh, no bacteria. There is nothing alive uh, in that pan. So just rest easy to know that when you cook with it and then you clean it and wipe it out, put it back on the heat, put some fresh bacon grease in there, uh, and then wipe it all out again and let it cool, that that pan is clean, sanitary, ready to go. And if you have nothing to worry about for food poisoning or anything of the like. So there you go. Have a great one. Get out there and get some cast iron and get to cooking. All right, bonus video here. I know some of you are probably thinking, hey, he said he was going to make a power bowl. I wonder how that's going to clean up. Well, here it is. I used the number nine for my power bowl. So we got our water heated up. Pan's good and hot. Wasn't too hot. Just gonna let that sit in there. A little bit of water. Now this time we're gonna need a scraper tool because that egg is good and stuck on. We're just gonna move that around. Don't have to use a lot of pressure. While I was setting this up, the pan was still on the oven and that egg got kind of good and cooked on. So this will be a, a good example for you. And you can see these scrapers have different angles on the corners. And you can, depending on your skillet, you can scrape around those edges and scrape, get your edges scraped off. But after you get the big stuff off, the little stuff comes off pretty easy. And we're just going to rinse that around. The only thing I don't like about making eggs. Some people can make eggs and never have any trouble at all. But every time I scramble eggs and make a power bowl and mix ingredients, I almost always end up with some stuck on stuff. And this one's particularly bad because I let it get bad for the video. So take that with a grain of salt. Hopefully you won't have to deal with, with this, but it's not bad. Just work at it a little bit. Scrape it down. It's almost done. And now is where we can use our chainmail scrubber. Get a little bit of water in there. We're just going to move that chainmail scrubber around. Go around the edges. Okay. And it's knocking that egg off with a quickness. Just look in the reflection of the water. You'll see it. This number nine is pretty heavy. Pan's nice and cooled off now. I can I can handle the pan. I mean it's warm but it's not it's not hot. And there you go. Clean pan. It wasn't that tough. We'll just give it a quick wipe out. I just keep a dish rag here. Wipe out the water. It's still wet, but it's okay. Just gonna wipe the back off. And then we're just gonna do the same thing we did with the number six. I'm gonna put this back on the oven, get it good and warm so it can dry off. Put a little dab of bacon grease in there and make it happy again.